guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So obviously I'm doing my intro a little bit different today. Normally I have my mobile phone camera at arm's length and I'm walking back and forth in the fish room. It helps distract me from talking to a camera. But uh, today I'm going to try something a little different. I've got you obviously mounted on a tripod and on my DSLR. So try to take full advantage of the image quality of this camera and produce better content for you guys. So I hope you enjoy this more than me pacing around the fish room. Anyway, in the last two weeks, we've posted two videos on my cousin Adam's fish room tour. Got some good feedback from those videos, and Adam actually sold some fish from those videos, so I'm really happy for him, that was great. If you haven't seen those videos yet, you can watch them right here. I've made a playlist for Adam's videos on his fish room. And if you're interested in purchasing any fish off Adam, please just feel free to forward me an email. The email is in the description of this video below. All right, guys, let's get into this video for today. Obviously, you've clicked on the video, you know what it's about, my July fish room update tour. So let's get straight into it with this update. So the first tank that's getting an update today is this one, my Judochromus Regani Zambia Gold tank. They have just spawned again. They've got some very young fry with them. It is their largest spawn to date with about 20 fry. That is nothing compared to my cousin Adam's adult pair where they have 150 fry per spawn. These guys are still very juvenile and have a lot more growing up to do, but their spawns are increasing with each spawn. So their very first spawn they had, they only had one fry. Uh, that was a couple months back. Now we're talking upwards of 20. So they are starting to mature. So the interesting thing with this tank at the moment is that the Judochromus Regani adult breeding pair have still accepted one of their oldest fry to be near their current brood. And you can see it in the center there, it's in between the male and the female. There are other older fry in this tank that aren't accepted by those parents and that are also bossed around by their same aged brother or sister. I'm not sure what sex it is, but it helps the parents defend the current young fry from the older fry that have been left in this tank. Didn't know Judochromus regani would behave this way. There are Tanganyikan cichlids that do behave in this way, such as Neolamprologus brachati and Neolamprologus multifasciatus. They are known as step breeders and the parents tolerate their eldest generation of fry with their youngest generation of fry and the different generations of fry don't harm the younger generations. This is the first time I've seen Judochromus regani behave in this way, but they've only accepted one of the older fry to defend the territory. And that older fry does not harm the youngest fry. It defends them just as well as the parents defend their own fry. Really interesting behavior. Again, I didn't expect it. Let me know in the comments below if you know of Judochromus regani behaving in this way. Is it unique to my situation? I'm not sure. Surely someone else out there has experienced this sort of behavior. I can't believe that I'm the very first one to have Reganis behave this way. Is it a trade amongst Judochromus? I am not sure either. But yeah, let me know in the comments below. And the next tank getting an update is my 4x2x2 mixed Tanganyikan tank. Kind of using this as a grow out tank for some of the brevis and Ocelatus fry. But as you can see in here, I have my male Ventralis tritica. The interesting with this tank at the moment is that the dominance of males has shifted. When I bought the Ventralis, I bought four in a bag at the auction, obviously unsexable at the size that they were, and with my luck, I happen to have three males and one female. Obviously with mouth breeding cichlids, you want to have a ratio of one male to say three females, that would be perfect. But as luck would have it, I happen to have the opposite ratio. Like I said, the interesting thing with this tank is that the dominance of the Ventralis tritica has shifted since I moved the female out of the tank. This male here you see displaying right now was the least dominant male of the three Ventralis that I had. Basically overnight the dominance had shifted. Now he's displaying to another male, it's just that that male is so subdominant that he looks like a female. <laughs> and he's trying to spawn with him because he is silver. The, the female Ventralis are silver. Now I know the dominance had shifted because I know which male she spawned with even though I missed the spawning event. Because the male that dug this pit that you see here, she spawned with that male and he lost his egg dummies. His egg dummy's gotten bitten off the day she spawned with him. So I can, I can only assume she gave him a really good biting on those egg dummies. 
to the point where she bit them off thinking they were her eggs. That could be due to her lack of experience, obviously her first time spawning, so that's a possibility. And through that, through him losing his egg dummies, I assume he lost his rank in this tank amongst the other two males. And the opportunity arose for the least dominant ventralis to become the most dominant ventralis in this tank. And he is a beautiful fish. I mean, look at that on the screen. You can see the beautiful blue iridescence they get down their body, that black breast that they get, their long ventral fins getting black, and you can see the yellow egg dummies at the tips of those long fins. I also know that it's a different male that she spawned with because this male has never coloured up like this before. My two other males that I have in here have black running down halfway down the bodies, whereas this guy is predominantly blue his entire body. It's unbelievable the coloration of this fish. And now that he's become the dominant male in this tank, I've seen it for the very first time this week. I didn't think these guys would switch dominance amongst the males. I know leptosoma can do it, parasiprochromus can do it, but dominance can shift with males. I've never kept those fish, I've just been told that. So guys, the next tank that's getting a bit of an update is this one. And hopefully you can see on camera that this fish is carrying a mouthful of fry. And this is the Ventralis trotipid female that spawned with the other male in the four foot tank. This fish has held these fry for about three weeks now. She is eating some baby brine shrimp twice a day, thankfully. Uh, I don't know how much longer she is going to hold these fry, but to me they look like they're fully developed. You can see them through the bottom of her mouth. I can see eyeballs, I can see them moving around in there, and I'm sure she's going to spit them out soon. I'm hoping for her sake that she does. I don't exactly want to pull the fry out, because this is her first time raising the fry. I want her to learn how to do it, rather than me interfering and her expecting that to happen every month, or whenever these fish spawn. I want her to learn how to be a good mother and look after her fry. So yeah, I am hoping that she will spit this fry out in the next day or two because I really want her to start gaining some weight and eating some proper food. And also I want to see the fry. My plan would be to keep her with her brood while she's raising them up and feed her and the fry and hopefully grow that instinct even stronger with her on how to look after fry. Okay guys, next update is my Neolopologus tetracephalus. If you watched the video a couple of weeks ago, they spawned on the gravel bed Unfortunately, a lot of the eggs got mixed in with the sand bed when they dig because they spawn on the gravel bed. So, as they keep digging sand out, they're inadvertently digging up their eggs as well and putting them in the sand bed. A couple of days later, I managed to siphon out 32 fry and place them in a gravel vac cleaner that I made into an egg tumbler, basically. And you can watch that video here if you haven't seen it yet. So these guys, just turn the lights on. The male, Trent, he's just off camera. You can see the female just went into the cave then. Normally, he will be aggressive to all the fish in this tank. When he's ready to spawn with his female, he'll accept her and he allows her access to his cave. So they are in the process of spawning right now. Because unfortunately, I lost all 32 fry that I had in that hatchery. I think I worked out why. They were doing really well about a week maybe two weeks after they had hatched and were free swimming in the tumbler, I noticed all they were eating were the microworms. They weren't accepting any other food, no matter what I put in there. Baby brine shrimp, crushed pellets soaked in aquarium water, little bits of dust, basically, of, my, uh, of mice's shrimp. They weren't eating it. All they were eating were the live microworms. And obviously, if you've kept fish, if you've bred fish, you would know that live microworms aren't enough to sustain fish. They need varied diet. They need a varied diet to grow. And these fry weren't growing. Their size stayed the same for about two weeks. I was trying everything I could to get them to eat anything else, but all they accepted was microworms. So I kept feeding them microworms. I kept giving them brine shrimp. They'd spit the brine shrimp out and only eat the microworms. I decided to let them out of the egg tumbler that I made into, the, into their two foot tank that they were in by themselves. I lost one more that day and then the next day I came home and I lost about 20 remaining fry in the one day. I had two fry left, the very next day they were gone.
really disappointed, very upsetting, very disheartening as you can imagine. I did my best, obviously wasn't good enough. Next time I think I'm going to be more prepared, I am going to buy a live baby brine shrimp. I was feeding them dead baby brine shrimp that I have from Ocean Nutrition and they weren't accepting it. So maybe I need to buy some eggs, some brine shrimp eggs, hatch them out and feed them the brine shrimp, the newly hatched brine shrimp. Maybe that will keep them going, that would attract them to the food, the motion of the baby brine shrimp sitting around might attract them to the food a bit more. And it is embarrassing, you know, I want to show you my successes but obviously in the reality of running a fishery, you're not always going to have successes. There are going to be some failures, and that was a failure. The other thing that may have contributed to it, I might have kept them in the egg tubular for a little bit too long, I'm not too sure, but they just weren't growing, and I believed that I needed to keep them in that egg tumbler until they put on a little bit of size. On the other side of that, by keeping them in the egg tumbler, you potentially are stunting their growth, especially from such a young age. So the next time they spawn, I will be more prepared, learn from my mistakes, and I'm going to be putting them, taking them out of the egg tumbler once they're free swimming. As you can see on camera, the male is accepting the female with him right now. I can't believe that I've got it on camera today. So I will have the opportunity to, to raise more trek fry in the next few weeks. Putting them back into that egg tumbler and trying it all over again. This time I will be more prepared. Look how they're courting right now. Hopefully you can see that on camera. The male's at the top, the female's at the bottom there. When they're not breeding, the male does not accept that female at all. He will not let her near this part of the aquarium. Her part of the aquarium is at the top left of the screen, off, off screen right now. But when he's ready to spawn with her, he accepts her and lets her near his cave. So he's dug all this sand out. They're gonna unfortunately spawn in the same spot. I know I'm gonna lose a lot of eggs, but there's nothing I can do about it short of taking all the sand out of this tank disrupting the fish and I don't want to do that. I let them be, let them spawn, I'll save what I can. Hopefully this time I'll have more success and I'll be able to raise the fry up to adulthood. You can see them courting there, he doesn't attack, he doesn't make her swim away. She's attacking the Koenga Golds, getting them away from their spawning site. This is their spawning behavior. This is how Tretts behave when they're ready to spawn. They'll come together for a short period of time, two to three days, they'll court, they'll spawn, once those fry become free swimming, my male attacks the female. She plays no further role in looking after those fry. He hovers around the nest site until the fry are free swimming and at that point I have to pull the fry out. So I'm not giving up. This will be the eighth or ninth time that they've spawned. The last time they spawned was my first time that I tried to raise the fry and it was a success up until a point. But unfortunately all the fry passed away. That is the update with this tank. If you're new to my channel, you might not be aware that I've had this fish room set up and running for just over a year now. And that also the entire process has been documented on my YouTube channel. So why don't you please consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss out on my regular content. I upload weekly videos every Tuesday, 7am Sydney time. So why don't you check out my very first video I uploaded to YouTube, where I show you what the room looked like when I set up the fish room. Or this video right here, which is about the plumbing and how I set up all 20 tanks to a central site. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap this one up now. Thanks, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!